welcome back to the channel. So today's the day we're gonna fire up the the new Viber lap, the Covington 10 inch Viber lap. We've got our instructions out. Me and Nolan are going through this trying to figure it out. Uh, we're gonna try to polish our big piece of petrified wood we just recently cut. Uh, it's gonna fit perfectly on the surface of the 10 inch uh, flat lap. So we're gonna go through this. I think we're gonna add two to three tablespoons of 40, 70 silicon carbide grid to start and see how that goes. I've marked up the surface. I think this is gonna take a little while because the surface is not exactly quite even. So I'm expecting maybe, it says six to eight hours in the instructions, but I think it's gonna probably be longer than that just to get this surface even and all these marks. I've marked it up here to try to show when everything is, is even. Um, so I think it's going to take a little longer than that. We'll see. So along with the two to three tablespoons of silicon carbide 4070 grit, we're going to add the same amount of water to the pan and then we'll turn it on and then we'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll monitor it during the day. I'm home for the next three days, so I'll be able to check in on it periodically, make sure the slurry is not getting too thick, but we'll show you how we're going to set it up here and let's see what we can do with it. So we've added the water and the grit and it looks like there's a lot of water in there so I'm wondering, we followed the instructions so I'm hoping it's correct. So we're going to turn it on now and see how loud it is, first time turning it on. It's not loud at all. It's pretty good. Actually it's humming. So we've screwed it down to the table, it looks pretty good. Just spread it around a little bit. Still looks like a lot of water. So you're supposed to get a nice slurry going, so we're going to see how long it takes to get this slurry going. And then uh, afterwards we're ready to put our rocks on. So we'll take an intermission until we wait for the slurry to build. So it's taken a while for that slurry to build, so I'm just going to put this on and start it up. And just see what happens. It's a trial and error kind of process here. So I'm going to come back and check on this periodically, probably every half hour or so. I heard that there can be some splashing, so if that's the case, I've got something like a cardboard box that I've prepared that I can put around it. But it doesn't look too bad right now. It's got the rubber ring around the sides to prevent the piece from getting damaged. I hope that that's not too heavy for it. You're supposed to see it turn in a circle, so that's a good sign. I guess we'll just check back on this here in about an hour. So here's my little makeshift cover. It's just a cardboard box, cut the bottom out of it, and I just place it on top. It's starting to get a little thicker, the slurry. It's been about a half an hour. Check back in on it, maybe in another hour or so. See how it's going. Okay, so it's been about a couple hours. There's a nice uh, slurry now on the surface of the pan. Still turning nicely. I'm not gonna check it. I'm gonna let it run. I'll keep coming down checking the water level. I should mention that we're not sponsored or affiliated in any way with Covington Engineering. I just did my research and found that this machine is likely to be the best option for us. So I'm going to come back and take a look in a couple hours, but I'm really happy with how things are going so far. And we'll see you in a few. I should also mention there is definitely some spillage going on, so having the cardboard box is a definitely a good idea. You can see splashing along the sides here As you can see it's splashed up here so definitely keeping the splash to a minimum by putting this box over it so it's a good idea
Okay, so it's been four hours. I came down and I pulled it off to check it. There's still some saw marks in it here. And you can still see some marker. And I also, the slurry was getting pretty dry, so I squirted it to get the slurry looking good again. So it's looking, it's looking better now. So I'm going to continue with it. I think it's going to take probably another six to eight hours to get this thing ground down into the 4670 grit. Yeah, it's going to be a, a little bit of a process, but uh, that's why I started it today. I'm going to be home for the next few days. So. so we're at the five and a half hour mark on stage one. And I think I definitely need to get a IV drip system uh, so I can constantly drip water onto the pan. I have to come down about every hour and add a bit of water via spray bottle to the pan so that it doesn't dry out and turn to a cake. So I've ordered one already and it should be here in a week. Like I said, I'm here for the next three days. I'm hoping to finish this project. So I'll just continue to come down and check on it every hour. Not a big deal for this for this project, but future projects, I definitely need to get a, an IV system, especially if I'm gonna leave it all day if I'm at work or something, so. That should work out. I've seen other people online do it, so. I underestimated the the requirement to add water constantly, so. But that's, that's cool. Uh, I've seen how people use the IV drip system and it works really well, so. Just a minor little hiccup. I should have prepared better, but. Anyway, we're still rocking and rolling here, and uh, I'm gonna let this go for probably another hour, and then I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna recharge the pan with more 4670 grit, and then I'm gonna put it back on probably for another like four hours, and then we're gonna see where we're at. I'm hoping that it'll be done by then for stage one, and then we'll move on to a stage two 120, 220 grit. Uh, but I'm still getting some good turning action here, so happy the way things are going so far. All right, it's been 10 hours, and I'm gonna pull this off. I'm gonna clean the pan out. I'm gonna take a look at the surface of the, the rock. I'm gonna see whether or not it needs to go in stage one longer. So I'm gonna do that now. So I've cleaned everything off. Here's the rock. So you can see there's still a little bit of marker here. There's a low spot right here. But for the most part, there's another tiny little low spot right there. But everything else is really smooth in the rock. Um, I'm gonna put this in longer because this, this low spot is pretty low. And I'm gonna have to bring this whole surface down to this elevation. So it's got a little bit of ways to go yet. Um, the whole cleanup process was about 20 minutes. Um, Maybe that's my first time, I don't know. You can see the plate, this is not grit, that's actually worn down. So you can see where the rock, so my plate might not have been level. Uh, it was kind of leaning to one side. Um, I'll have to check that. It looks level right now. I mean, that's pretty level. It may be slightly leaning. It might have been just the rock is kind of weighted to one side maybe but you can see the circular pattern it wore down the aluminum or the cast iron whatever that is I think it's aluminum <laughs> anyway cleaned out the pan got all the grit out but I'm gonna run the 4670 again try to get that surface down so let's go try to get this thing ground down a little more so we're in hour 12 of the 4670 grit still stage one the rock was really rough it wasn't a very clean cut when I cut it, so I don't think this is going to be typical of how long it would normally take. Also, it's a it's a big rock, so um, you know, on a really clean cut rock, I'm only expecting six to eight hours on stage one. This is just a special instance where I, I got I want to get all the cut grooves and everything out of it, so it's it's taking a little longer. I still have to come down every hour or so and add water, so the IV drip system is a must. But I'm pretty happy with things are going. In a couple hours, I'll probably come down and add a bit more grit. The grit breaks down pretty fast because it's silicon carbide grit. So it's probably, what's in there right now is probably breaking down to like a, a 120, 220 kind of size. 
So I'm gonna recharge the pan here in probably, probably another hour or two. And I'm hoping after another four to six hours, this thing will be done. I'll probably check it at in a couple hours just to see where we're at, see how much longer we're gonna have. But all in all, uh, I'm pretty happy with the operation. It's, you know, I think this is gonna work out well. It's, it's operating as it should, so I'm happy with that. So we'll check back in a couple hours. So I pulled it off and as you can see, we still have this section right here that needs to come down. And I think this is gonna still take a while. There's a little, little uh, groove here as well. But it's, it's starting to look really good on over here. You know, if, this, if, if everything was like this, even here, I would have kept it, but there's a little triangle wedge here that needs to get down. So all this needs to come down to this surface and it's gonna take a while yet. I'm gonna recharge the pan with another tablespoon of grit and keep it going. Uh, we're at the 13 and a half hour mark right now of stage one. So unfortunately I gotta keep going. Again, it's because of how crappy of a job I did to cutting this, so. Anyway, it is what it is. Let's keep going. I also leveled it better. Put some cardboard underneath with some washers, and it's much, it's centered better. Anyway, hopefully that'll keep it from coming over here and wearing the plate more on this side. Hey guys, so just a quick update on this. I, uh, I've learned a lot in the past six hours. So I'm on hour 20 right now of grinding this large piece of petrified wood in stage one of my Viber Lab. Now, what I've learned is if you do not have the pan centered perfectly, it causes extreme havoc on the system. So, if it was, my, my piece was leaning quite a bit pro previously, as you probably noticed in some of the other videos, what it was doing was it was causing water uh, slurry to splash out of the pan. In turn, what that did was it thickened up the slurry that was left in the pan because it didn't have enough water. It was losing water too fast. Now that it's leveled perfectly, you can see the piece is, is pretty much rotating in the center. I have no splashing and I have not had to add water in about four hours. And the slurry still looks great. I'm still hearing the scratching noise that you're supposed to hear, and it's getting great turning motion. So it's like 11 o'clock at night here right now. I did take a peek at it, and I still have a little bit of that triangle marker that I need to get off. It's it is working. It's grinding down. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to recharge the pan, and I'm going to see if I can leave it go overnight. I'm gonna, I'll be getting up pretty early tomorrow anyway, so it's probably only gonna run about five to six hours on its own. So I'm gonna see if I can get away with that and then check back in the morning. So, wish me luck. Okay, so, just a little update on where I am in the process here. So, it took 28 hours in the coarse grind to get the rock through stage one. It's perfectly smooth now. What you're seeing here is the rock now in stage two. So this is a 120, 220 grit. I just started it. Now, I forgot to uh, film the end of the stage one and that's only because my dad passed away this week and it's been a little busy so I haven't really gotten to, uh, been able to focus on any uh, rock hounding or lapidary stuff so I forgot, I just forgot to film the end of it. I thought I had actually and I just, I looked back at my footage and I noticed I didn't have it. So anyway, I'm just giving you an update. All the markers that I had on stage one, all the marker on the surface is gone. I finally got it all level. Uh, it took 28 hours. So that was unusual, I think, only because I had some learning curves going on. I found out that if you don't have the pan perfectly centered, it's not good. It doesn't really grind well. Also, if you don't have good spinning action, it doesn't grind well either. You know, I just didn't cut the rock evenly. It had a lot of grooves in it, had a lot of saw marks in it. Uh, it was uneven, so it just took a lot to grind it down. So I don't think normally, if you have a good cut, a nice clean flat cut, 
it would not normally take that long. It probably only takes six to eight hours like it should normally take. So anyway, reason why you're seeing a rock on top of this rock now is because when I put this back on, and I noticed it at the end of stage one, two, I think as it's grinding down, it's getting lighter, the rock. So they say in the instructions that if you don't see spinning action, it's because there's not enough weight per surface area. So basically, I wasn't getting really good spinning action. I wasn't getting any spinning action, actually. So what I did was I added this other rock on top, which is just another cycad. And it's just sitting on top, adding some weight. And now it's spinning at a decent rate. So it's in the center of the pan, too, which is good. So I'm going to run this. Now that the rock is even, I'm going to run this for six to eight hours. I didn't mark the rock this time. Uh, I just want to see if I can notice a difference without it. And then I'll go ahead and and move it along. I just want to see if now, if the times that they recommend are the actual times it will take. If I don't see a good shine at the end, I'll come back to the stage and redo it. I'm going to let this run for like six to eight hours. So I'll be back tonight and we'll give another update. Again, I still don't have my IV system for watering. So I'm going to come down and water this every hour just to make sure the slurry doesn't thicken up. All right, bye for now. So this has been going for nine hours. And I think we're ready to pull it off and clean it up and get it ready for the stage three grit, which would be a 500 grit aluminum oxide. So I'm gonna pull this off now, clean it up, and we'll show you the end here of stage two. So here it is, fresh out of stage two, 120, 220 grit. It's feeling very smooth. All the marker is gone. This is even on the whole surface now so what i'm going to do it's late in the night now so i'm not going to run any more stages tonight i'm going to take this up and soak it in some liquid dawn and just some water i'll just let it soak overnight it'll it helps loosen up the grit that's any that is left in here and i'll also give these pockets a little scrub make sure i get the grit out of it and then tomorrow i'll start the 500 grit aluminum oxide stage which I have a completely different pan for I actually have another pan so that's the pan I've used you can see it's it's worn down now in the middle you can see the the wear on it so the outer part of the pan is not getting but it, it looks pretty even so I mean I know I have the table level at least or at least the pans level and I had some good turning motion on the on the rock so here's my this will be my aluminum oxide pan and polishing pan that I use I also have a velvet polishing pad that came with here, so that'll be for the final polishing stage. But for now, we're going to take this one up and soak it, and I'll see you tomorrow, but for you, it'll be a couple seconds. One thing I've found when doing this, especially with this particular piece, is that I need to soak it in warm water and soap in between each stage, the reason being is because of the voids in the face so all the pockets there the grit I find has traveled so far down into them that it requires a lot of soaking in between stages it, yeah, a regular hose and brush won't get it out and I think this is just specific to this piece where it's got all these voids you know these pockets which I just think run really deep into the rock and there's grit way up into it. So I actually need to take the time to clean these out. This rock is, you know, it might not have been the best rock to show for the first video on the Viber Lap, but a couple ways it is good because it's showing these types of rocks, the, the extreme ones, the things you need to do to take, you know, the care and the time to make sure that you're getting the proper polish. And this is just one of the things I need to do that I found in, in this. So I'm gonna, rinse this out and put it in for another soak. I do this until I don't see any more grit at the bottom of this pan. And I know I see grit here because you can see it's right there. So I'm gonna rinse this outside so it doesn't go down my drain. And then I'll be soaking it again. And I keep doing this until I don't see any more grit in the bowl. And that's how I know it's all out. So I'll do this and I won't start stage three until I've done all of this. So here we go. Okay, so the piece has soaked for a while and I think all the grit is out now. It's feeling very smooth. 
it's just obviously now needs to go into the stage three the 500 aluminum oxide grit I have not seen anybody use aluminum oxide in pre-polish on a vibrating lap in all the research I've done so I'm entering uncharted waters here there might be a reason why no one's done it and I'm gonna find that out but I'm gonna try it anyway I bought a second pan dedicated for aluminum oxide grits only so I have one pan here for silicon carbide grits and I'm gonna have one pan here for aluminum oxide I'll also use this for my polishing which I have a felt pad for I'm gonna go ahead and set this up put the grid in put the water in and I'm gonna put the rock on and see how things turn out here okay so I got the pan charged up with the grit put the I put the rock on and now it's turning pretty good looks like the slurry is building up nicely I'm gonna let this run a little bit see how it goes again I think I'm in uncharted territory here using aluminum oxide as a pre-polish you know a vibratory lap but we're gonna see how it goes so far so good I'm gonna let this run I'm gonna check on it every hour as usual and I'm gonna let it run for about six to eight hours I'll check the surface of it after that so stay tuned for the updates so I came back down to check and my slurry is no longer white it's gray so that leads me to believe that there was still some grit in the holes and cavities and cracks and at this point I'm just gonna let this run I had most of the aluminum most of its aluminum oxide it's just dying at gray because the aluminum oxide is white We'll see how this goes. I'm hoping that that grit that's in there that was the 120, 220 silicon carbide, I'm hoping that it broke down to something a lot finer, which it does. It, silicon carbide breaks down really easily and fast, and aluminum oxide doesn't break down very fast. So I'm hoping that the combination of these two grits hopefully brings it to like a 400 grit maybe. I'm just hoping that it doesn't ruin the rock too much. I'll, I'll let this go for the uh, full cycle. eight to 10 hours and then I'll take a look at it and if it doesn't look any different then I'll just keep rerunning this until the gray goes away in 500 aluminum oxide. A little unfortunate but I'm learning lessons here. I think again this piece is just I might have bit off more than I can chew doing this piece as my first one on the vibro lap. It's just got so many holes and cavities in it it makes it a really challenging uh, polish. I probably should have used something that was flat with no fractures but We'll go through this together. All right, it's been four hours and it's starting to do some funky stuff. It's doing some weird jerking and stuff in there. So I think I'm gonna recharge the pan. I'm gonna clean it out, uh, clean the rock off. And then I'm gonna put some more 500 grit aluminum oxide in there. Uh, you can see the slurry is that slurry is even darker than when I just had silicon carbide 120, 220 in there. So I'm hoping that this is just normal for this aluminum oxide to break down that color. I, I've never seen it happen, but I only use it for tumbling. So um, yeah, it's interesting. It'd be interesting to see if the rock looks any different after four hours. But I'm going to clean this up now. I'm going to wash it really good, rinse the pan out really good, and I'm going to charge the pan again and then see how it looks and run it for another four hours. So I've cleaned this up, I'm in the middle of stage three, and I don't notice much of a difference in the shine. So I'm going to put it back on, recharge the pan, clean the pan out, you can see where it's worn down. I'm going to put this back on, some more 500 grit aluminum oxide, and I'm going to run it to the completion of the cycle. I'm going to let it go 10 hours, so I'll, it's uh, 5 o'clock now, so I'm going to take it off tonight at 10 o'clock, and that'll be... 10 hours total for it. We'll see what it looks like at the end. So this is the end of stage three and it's perfectly flat, super smooth. I don't really notice, uh, maybe a little bit, I might notice a little bit of a cleaner surface from stage two. I'm gonna put it in stage four now, 1200 aluminum oxide. The next time you see this, we'll be starting stage four. Got the 1200 grit aluminum oxide ready here. So this is stage four. 
and we're going to go ahead and charge the pan and fire her up. Okay, so it's on the pan. Pan's charged. I'm getting good turning action. You can see there's a little bit of gray, so there is still grit in those cracks of the rock. So I'm going to run this the full nine to ten hours, and I'm going to see if I notice any difference in the polish. We have what it looked like before we put it in. We should notice a difference between 500 and 1200 grit. So we'll know right now, after this stage, whether or not that grit that's left in that rock is affecting the polish. I'm hoping that it, the grit is broken down enough. It's, it's probably mostly silicon carbide and, and maybe a little bit of aluminum oxide from the previous run. I'm hoping it broke down to a much finer grit so that it's actually gonna polish, but we're gonna see. So. I'm going to check it every hour or so, get some water on the pan, and uh, yeah, just a normal procedure here. So I'll check back in with you. Okay, so we're about three hours into stage four, 1200 grit, and you can see my slurry is, as usual, turning gray. So we're just going to keep going, assuming that everything is cool. I've added a bit of water. I haven't had to add much water on this, actually. I wonder if the finer grits retain the water better. I think they do, they probably absorb more water, so uh, it's looking good. It's doing a little quick turning, but it's still turning okay. I'm gonna let this run. We'll check back in a little bit. So we're in hour number six, and slurry's looking good still. Still some funky action going on the spinning, but it's spinning decently, and it's staying somewhat centered on the pan, so I'm gonna leave it. So far, so good. Can't wait to see what this will look like. Hopefully it'll shine up better than the uh, 500 grit stage. So we'll see. Okay, so it's been nine hours. I'm gonna pull this off, take a look at it. See if it got any more shine here. Okay, so the rock is now cleaned off. It's out of the, the stage four, 1200 grit stage. The good news is, is that I do see an improved shine on this. So I'm going to try to bring it over here towards the window just so you guys can see. I definitely see some reflection there. In the 500 grit stage, I didn't see that. So definitely getting a shine now, a better shine. So this is after 1200 grit. The bad news is, is that I've 100% discovered where the grit is coming from now. Um, it's not coming from the cavities. I'm, I'm able to get the grit out of the cavities, pretty much all of it. The grit that's left over is coming from the porous limestone. The grit slurry, especially in the finer grits, it's getting up in there into this limestone. You see some lime, anywhere there's limestone on the surface of this piece of petrified wood. It, the grit's getting up in there. I know this because when I was wiping it down, I would wipe the limestone and I would turn it over and I would see grit on my rag. And I'd wipe it anywhere where, the, where it's silica or any of the cavities and I wasn't getting that. So I know there's grit up in that porous limestone. So in order to get that out, I would have to probably soak this thing for weeks. And I'm not even going to attempt to do that. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I've got the polish pan set up. So this is going to be a micro alumina polish that I'm going to put in here. I fully expect this to turn gray again because I know there's some grit stuck in here but what I'm hoping is that I get most of the alumina will do most of the work on the surface and I'm hoping it'll it won't dilute the grit that much. So I'm, I'm just doing this as an experiment right now. I don't know how successful I'm going to be here so I'm going to try this see what this looks like. I know if I polish this with my diamond pads on my drill I know that I could get a really mirrored shine at 3000 grit. So I'm just hoping maybe the 1200 is going to break down real fine. Everything, all the grit that's in there, it'll just break down really fine and I'll get a nice polished surface here at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and try this, set it up. Uh, I'm home all day, so I'm going to monitor it. I'm going to run this for probably 10 to 12 hours today. You guys will see the end product. I'm going to check it uh, every hour here while it's in polish. So let's get this pan set up and going. And since I'm experimenting, I know this is gonna, this is this felt pad is probably gonna get ruined 
if it turns gray. I do have another one and I have another ring on order that I'm going to, you know, so that when I do this again in the future and I run more rocks, I'm not going to be running something that's going to be, you know, maintaining grit after each stage. So this is going to be just for this piece only. I'm hoping it doesn't get ruined too much, but you know, I fully expect this felt pad probably not to be usable again after this. They're pretty cheap. They're only like eight bucks or something. So I bought a couple more and I have a couple more of these rings on order. So let's give it a go. Okay. So I got it going on the polish. This is 15,000 grit alumina powder A. So I'm going to check back on this thing every hour or so. I've supercharged the pan, so there's quite a lot of grit on there. It takes They say it takes quite a lot to charge the pan the first time. So I'm starting to see little specks of gray, but this has been going for about 10 minutes and it's not too bad, but I still expect this to turn a bit gray. I've got quite a bit of grit in there, quite a bit of the Illumina Powder A grit polish, so it's moving pretty good. I'm, I'm optimistic, so let's check back on this in a bit. Okay, so we're about an hour and a half in. This is looking really good. The pan's really nice and charged. And the slurry is staying white. It's not turning gray. So I'm thinking the vibration is cushioned a bit from the felt pad, and it's not knocking the grit loose from the limestone, which is good. So it's staying up in there, and the rock surface is getting polished with the proper material. So this looks really good. I'm really optimistic now, so we'll check back in a little bit. So we're three hours in, and I put the splash guard around it. It was there's a lot of foam built up, so I think I put too much grit in the pan. I put like two tablespoons in, and I don't think you needed that much. It's said to put more grit in your first time to, to charge the pad. Like the first time you use it, you need to charge it really well. You'll probably have to put more in than usual, but I think I put way too much in. So I've been stopping it and, and cleaning some foam. Some foam is building up. Uh, it's still a good little paste that's got going on. So it's it's like a supercharged pad now. Anyway, I'm still getting good turning action. Uh, the, the cloth is turning slightly with it, but the rock's turning faster, so it's still polishing. Um, I think that's because there's a lot of uh, foam built up. So every hour or so I come down, I just scrape some of the foam out uh, and then it kind of keeps the turning of the pad down to a minimum. But it's looking good. I'm really still optimistic. I think it's gonna turn out pretty good. So we'll check back on a bit. Okay, so we're at the four and a half hour mark. I'm gonna pull this off and take a look and see what the shine looks like. I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty good. There's been no grit contamination at all in this stage, which I'm really happy about. So I'm going to clean this off and take a look. I don't need to recharge the pan. I got plenty of uh, polish in there. It's got a really nice foam slurry going, so I think it's it's pretty good. So let's take a look at this right now and see what it looks like halfway through this polish. Okay, so this is after four and a half hours in polish. And as you can see, this thing is polishing up really nice. This is completely dry right now. You can see it's starting to get that mirror finish. Really happy with how this is turning out. So this is only after four and a half hours. That's, that's almost looking like a final polish. I can see just a slight, maybe a little bit of dullness but that's looking really good. So I'm gonna stick this back on for another four hours. They say in the instructions four to six hours, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna polish this eight hours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay committed to what I, my plan was because I was thinking there was gonna be some grit contamination, but I'm gonna go ahead and just go a little bit of a, go the extra mile on this one. So anyway, really happy with the progress on this and let's stick it back on. Again, I got my slurry nice and good here. A little bit of foam on the sides. Again, I think I put too much grit in there, but uh, it's got a, the pad's really nice and charged right now. This is going really good. Uh, let's put it back on. 
Okay, so it's been eight hours and the time has finally come to check the final results of polishing this 15 pound piece of petrified wood cycad from Nova Scotia. So let's pull it off, clean it up, and look at the finished product. Okay, so this is the finished product. As you can see, we got a nice mirror shine. I'm very happy with the results. This was a good learning experience on using the VibraLab. I learned what I need to do in order to get this shine. I learned how long I have to have it in each stage. I learned how much grit needs to go into the 10 inch pan for each stage. So I'll put the recipe that I used for all this and how long each stage took in the description so you guys have an idea of that. You know, I'm pretty happy with the results. It was a good learning curve. I think this piece was the wrong piece to use, but at the same time, learned a lot from using this and what not to do and when you have all these cavities and things. So I don't know if I could have gotten a better shine than that. That's mirror shine, so pretty happy. What do you think, Chase? Uh, it's pretty cool that it's shiny, and I like the colors of it. You know the colors? Yeah. So we're gonna use that tool more, shine up some more of our rocks, eh? All right, so. Sorry for the length of this video. Uh, I was gonna break it into two videos, but I thought, you know, I think it would be better to have all the results in one video so you could see it from beginning to end. So anyway, thanks for sticking around this long and hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was at least a little bit informative and entertaining and we'll see you next time. Take care.